Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 bringing you another exhibition match stream, and tonight it's a bit of a special one because there is the 2v2 tournament this Saturday. Monthly, regular Zero K 2v2 tournament. Well, monthly tournament, of course, and this month it is a 2v2 tournament this Saturday, October 25th at 9 a.m. Universal Time Code. Yeah, 9 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Basically, it's 9 a.m. UTC, so convert that to whatever you want. It's 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in North America. It's about, well, 9 a.m. around 9 or 10 a.m. in Britain. I think 11 or noon in Germany. Australia, it's somewhere on the lines of 5 p.m., I think. Anyway. Actually, I think it's 7 p.m. Anyway. So, look it up on 0K forums and, well, the 0K website will be a main page news post. There should be a time converter on there so you can get the time in your local time zone. And feel free to join up. I mean, yes, it is a tournament, but it is, well, it's a 2 tier tournament, so find someone you're comfortable to play with, join up with them, and it should be a blast. So, <laughs> because of that, we're going to have a 2v2 exhibition stream, a few 2v2 replays that I've found that look like they should be fairly interesting. And the first one is going to be between Farnham and Pack and Svatopluk and Bellamorte on Into Battle. So without further hesitation, let's get to it. Well, okay, mostly without further hesitation. Let's go, okay, there we go. Ops is in, and we have Farnab in the northeast side of the map going for air immediately. Trepak going for jump bots, Svatopluk going for light vehicle factory, and Bellamorte going for light vehicles as well. So double air versus double, oh, sorry, jump and air versus double light vehicles. Which unfortunately are not really ordered by team. That's okay. That I'll have to, or Ally team should do that. That I should talk to Car Repair about. But anyway, coming in very quickly, Trepak and Fireneb, or Pack and Fireneb coming in. Farnab coming in with a very quick Raven, while Pack coming in with a couple of Pyros. Svatopluk having very little to defend. There's one defender, and that's about it. Svatopluk being the stronger of the two, as you can see by the Ella rating. Both players are quite logically targeting them first. While Bella Morte, on the other hand, gets a decent amount of time to build up, going for very quick early Scorchers. And actually, Svatopluk and Bella Morte, Team Red is doing pretty well for economy. And good choice in the early leveler as well, to get rid of those Pyros. A lot of strength, a lot of firepower, don't have to worry about missing the pyros, which obviously jump around a lot, can be difficult to catch. Good choice there by Svatopluk. At this point, however, the big problem is going to be these ravens. There's already one that's been floating around, well, the one here has been floating around. Second one being built up, and Treb, sorry, Pack. Treb, I guess, being a clan tag, usually it is. Pack building up Freakers, going pretty heavily for economy, while Bella Morte coming in with Scorchers along the north side, this should pot actually will no, it looks like this won't distract Farnab. They are going pretty solidly for these Ravens to the southwest, which means Bella Morte has a decent amount of room here. And Farnab, what do they have for vision? They do not know this is coming. They have no idea this is coming, no radar, nothing. And now they finally know. It's come up, they've just seen it, and I shouldn't say finally, because they wouldn't have had any reason to see it before, but now they see it. And Bella Morte actually losing one of the scores is pretty quick to that Lotus. But getting rid of the Lotus now, and should be able to get rid of the air factory right away. Fireneb's commander not even close. One of the Ravens coming back, both Ravens actually being damaged. Svatopluk having set up in the southwest a bunch of defenders. And Fireneb about to lose their air factory, down it goes! The air factory goes out right away. And I think we might start seeing the typical Fireneb resign strategy. I really hope we don't, but that's a typical thing. And it looks like actually, well, yeah, Fireneb is actually voting to resign. But that... Yeah, Pack does not want to resign. And Farnab, yes, we actually do see exactly that. Farnab does go for the classic resign strategy. I mean, seriously, that's something that Farnab does all the time. If Farnab's in the tournament, that's what we're going to see. We saw the last time, actually, that Farnab was in the tournament. So now it is Svartpluk and Bellamorte versus Pack. Pack having double what they need to do anything with it. Why don't you close? Ah, end vote. Don't want that vote widget. How do I? Oh, whatever, I'll deal with that later. Anyway. Pack, I want to get on to get rid of this vote, which I do not need it as a spectator. Pack, however, coming in with another f nearly half dozen Scorchers just to deal with the rest of the base here. And there is this one Raven that's coming around. At this point, I don't think... Does Pack actually know what's going on? Well, yeah, they do now. The Ravens do see the Scorchers. The Scorchers are in a really nice position for the Raven to deal with. 
while at the same time expanding pretty heavily to the southwest, trying to put some pressure on Svatopluk. Though Svatopluk has not really built much. They have a lot of nano frames as walls, but they haven't really been building a whole lot. Okay, it's not necessarily walls. Looks like what they're doing is they're building up a bunch of nano frames for the caretakers to deal with. But building no units, relying entirely on Bellamorte to deal with this, and Bellamorte about to lose all these Scorchers, possibly. Actually, no, no, no. There's enough Scorchers here that if this Raven goes down to attack, these Scorchers should be able to kill it before any damage is dealt. But those Raven, that Raven is not actually doing anything. Pack not using it at all, just flying around, scouting out, not attacking. However, they do have the Stinger set up, which will be a small problem. And by small problem, I mean it's going to be a total pain in the butt. At least for the Ravager, for the Scorchers shouldn't be the biggest deal, and even then, the Scorchers can get around, hit the Metal Extractors, that's the big money. That's the big ticket item, that's what they want to get rid of. Pack, however, has less, okay, 28 Metal, 32 Energy, compared to Svetopluk having 22, partly from Reclaim. So overall, Svetopluk and Bellamorte are a little bit ahead economically from Pack, but not too far, actually, not too far ahead of the Pack, as it were. While Pack continuing to go for quite a few Pyros, I mean, this Raven, I'm a little surprised, is not going around harassing. And Crasher coming in to finish it off. We'll be able to get into the Raven. No damage will be dealt with that Raven as the Crasher goes to the final shot. Shooting it down, and at this point I think that Belamorte might decide to go for an attack. Looks like they are primarily going for Contain, though. And over to the south, we do see a nice setup by Pack. Pack just getting themselves ready here. They want to get ready. They want to have themselves set up with all these Pyros. And now they're going for the attack with another Stinger, just in case a counterattack comes in. And the defenders may not be enough. Some Wolverines have already been placed in, and they've just come in trying to get rid of the Stinger, but the Leveler is really the only chance that they have. Actually, you know what? The Leveler is doing a pretty decent job. Leveler and the defenders are doing an okay job, but then they're at the cost of about three defenders. Not the biggest deal. There's enough repair power that it won't be a problem. But Pack is doing a Stinger Crawl. And, surprisingly, and okay, if say surprisingly, Belamonte is not doing anything. But no, Belamonte is in fact coming in from the north. Getting rid of the stuff, and okay, yeah, Svetopluk kind of makes sense. This does look kind of chickeny. Good thing to point out, because, yeah, the sheer amount of defenses and that was many units. I can see that. I've actually not seen Svetopluk play. Evidently, they're quite an experienced player, given the Elo rating, but I don't know the name. I I looked it up, I checked the AKAs, and nothing was familiar about it. Yeah, Svetopluk does not actually register for me. Probably never played 1v1, or played very little 1v1, or hasn't played recently for 1v1. But this is why I'm doing this partially, in order to understand who the players are, because not all the players who play 1v1 play 2v2 and vice versa. There is not a complete perfect overlap, which makes perfect sense. And Svetopluk being one of those examples. But we do see that Svetopluk is not really doing a whole lot, actually. Bellamonte has been doing a lot of the damage here. Admittedly, Pack has been able to defend against this and will be able to get a lot of money, a lot of metal off of these here. But Pack at the same time, does have very little territory. They're losing basically everything they had in the northeast that they took from Firenab, and to the south, they have a bit of a strong presence over to the very, very, very southeast, but that's about it. And while Bellam sorry, while Svetopluk has lost their light vehicle factory, they can easily rebuild another factory. They have quite a lot of metal. In fact, they should. Everyone's accessing here. Now, Svetopluk and Bellamorte both are accessing. Bellamorte needs to build a caretaker. I mean, I don't know why they're building a stinger. This stinger does not make sense, by the way. This makes zero sense. In fact, Bellamorte, I think, does have radar. Yeah, Bellamorte has radar here. They know what's going on. They have no reason to fear what could possibly happen. There's nothing that could happen. Oops. Bellamorte knows exactly what's happening, and they know there's nothing near enough for the stinger to be useful. I don't know why they built that. Caretaker would have been a much better use of money, but yeah, don't build a stinger unless, generally it's conventional wisdom, you build a stinger kind of the center of the map where you expect your unit's forces to come in as they're coming in, in order to deal with them then. Building a stinger in the middle of your base, especially when it's not under attack in the least, makes no sense. It's a little bit unfortunate because right now Belamorte has a lot of metal and not a lot of caretakers, so I'd look actually going for storage instead just to deal with this. Although, I'm a little surprised there hasn't been a factory up yet. Getting an Aegis just to deal with the Stinger, and same thing here. Both players going very chickeny. Very much for defenses, not... Where is that factory? Look, why are you not building another factory? I am very surprised at this. Seriously, why, why is there no other factory? Do not see another factory being built up yet. I find that very surprising. On the other hand, Belamorte has apparently gone for... Yeah, their commander is helping out the commanders, pushing more metal into the factory, that is what they need to do, and they are doing it, which is good to see. 
However, there needs to be more levelers. There needs to be, and there are more levelers, which is perfect. There are more levelers. There's some Ravagers, and the Impaler is doing a pretty decent job just keeping this northeast side in check. But after this attack, I don't know what pack really has. This is the strongest area they have for defenses. Their main base is pretty open, really. I mean, as long as nothing attacks it, they're fine. But if Belamonte decides, you know what, I'm just going to attack the main base. Just go for it. Just try to take out Trepak's base, or Pack's base. There's a Sumo that'll take about a minute or three in order to build, and that's going to be nothing. So Belamonte could actually take this out right now, and Svetopluk has not gone for another factory at all. In fact, the only thing being built from factories right now... What, seriously? Okay, five Ravagers. But the only thing being built right now is Sumos, but no, there are five Ravagers coming in. So it's a little odd seeing the, by ELO rating at least, weaker players doing most of the work. Although, I gotta say, Pack is actually doing a pretty decent job for the fact that they are playing one on two and have been for about half the game so far. Granted, they grabbed a bunch of Firenab stuff, but Firenab did go for a bit of an all-in, which means Pack was not in the best position to start off. However, that being said, Pack is also nicely distracting Spadaplik. I'm really surprised Spadaplik has not gone for another factory. At, this is actually kind of foolish right now. Spadaplik does need another factory. If Spadaplik built another factory, they would win outright. And Bellamorte is doing a pretty decent job, too. I mean, Bellamorte is pushing in pretty hard. They have a bunch of Ravagers. They aren't pushing as hard as they could, theoretically. But they are pushing hard. They are kind of being safe. With this many Ravagers and Levelers, they could push into the Stinger and take it out. Although, admittedly, the bigger deal is the metal extractors. This area is almost entirely metal extractors. They took that out, and also they took out the commander. They took out the commander, that would mean no build power to the north at all. In fact, I don't think there'd be any build power at... Yeah, there'd be no... No, there's some build power down here. There is an engineer right here. There's a freaker. So that would be something. Yeah, I'm not even going to pay attention to this fight anymore. They are not building anything of note at all. Everything of, of import is happening to the north, and even then, not a whole lot. But down goes that one stinger. The first stinger is down, and now this is a good time for the Ravagers to come in. Only one stinger to contend with. You could take out the entire northeast side, and these masons could come in right after and finish it off. Yeah, just three masons here, all of them belonging to Bella Morte. And also setting up a nice little chain of overdrive. Looks like they're trying to get back to the main base. Slowly but surely, at least. At any rate, Bella Morte does have one Ravager in here, just dealing with few solar collectors. Straight solar collecting, take it out, no problem. And now Trepak moving their commander in. Wanting to repair that stinger, but this would be a perfect time to move in the Ravagers. Although I gotta say, also moving to the south wouldn't be a terrible idea, like I said. Sumo now up, by the way. Sumo has just been built, so Pack does have the Sumo, meaning that has... that window of opportunity has closed. Bella Monte cannot do anything to the southeast easily. I mean, they have plenty of forces. They can pretty easily do something to the southeast. They just can't do it as easily as they could have about two minutes ago. Sumo is no longer under construction, and at this point, it doesn't matter. Belamote going in, trying to take out Pax Commander, and Pax Commander is basically gonna die. Pax Commander taken out, being taken out by Ravagers, and down it goes! Pax Commander has gone down. Pax still has quite a lot of metal to work from, though. I mean, they have caretakers in the main base. They are pushing 27 metal, actually. How are they getting so much metal? And these are all two spots. Yeah, they're all two spots. Not even any overdrive, it's just that there's enough of them. Yeah, they just happen to have about 13 metal spots. But it doesn't matter, Pack has decided there's no hope left in the game, and throws in the towel. So yeah, not, not the most interesting game, I apologize, I suppose, that was not the most interesting. But it was something of an introduction. And so the next game is going to be one between Edible and Sergeant Smuggler versus 400 and Exploit. Hmm. It's going to be on Red Comet, and it's going to be kind of similar with two skilled players and two low skill players. Hope, I mean, there's not going to be a Fire Nab in this one, so we are going to see a proper 2 on 2, not a 1 on 2 where the newbie is given the 1. Should be a lot better. Stay tuned for that, it'll be up in just a moment.